Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Norville, this edition's top stories. St. Lucia and the OECS will soon be armed with rapid test kits in the fight against COVID-19. Southern businesses consolidate to take advantage of new opportunities and a special campaign to assist vulnerable families during the COVID-19 pandemic is launched. St. Lucia, along with the rest of the OECS, will soon be armed with rapid test kits in the fight against COVID-19 as member states reopen. The kits are among critical equipment to be procured by the OECS Commission. As the world continues to find the COVID-19 pandemic, the ability to conduct accurate and frequent testing cannot be overstated. Director General of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS Commission, His Excellency Dr. Didicus Jules, highlighting the importance of accurate testing, indicated that the OECS Commission has been working assiduously to obtain accurate testing kits. The OECS Commission, for its various missions, got in contact with a Senegal company making accurate test kits to be sold at one US dollar. However, these were intended for use solely in Africa, and so the Commission resorted to alternative means. But they have an arrangement with a company in Switzerland that is developing, uh, producing the test kits for sale, principally to developing countries. Now, I don't think they're going to be at one US. For, for that. Once they've gone through that channel. That channel, yeah. yeah, but at least it's going to be much cheaper because the regular reliable test costs anywhere from 100 to 300 um, EC dollars per test. With Caribbean countries embarking on a regional approach to reopening the tourism industry, the need for rapid testing has become even more evident. His Excellency Dr. Jules also explained that the OECS Commission has been able to procure equipment to aid in rapid testing. In a context of the need for rapid and widespread testing, this becomes an, an unassumable cost for our governments. Right? And, um, so we are aggressively trying to get donations of test kits and all of that. We the other thing too is the testing equipment. Um, we discovered through our mission in Brussels that the International Atomic Energy Agency um, is, is, has, is, is providing um, a test, a, the most accurate testing equipment available globally. And that uses radioisotopes and so on. It's very sophisticated. It identifies every, every type of virus that is, that is known. And it does it within very quick time, within an hour, multiple tests can be executed at the same time. So we approached them and we got agreement from them to provide one of, one of those pieces of equipment to each member state, including St. Kitts and Nevis, which was not a member of the IAEA, but we were able to make the case because of the unification and the free movement of people in the OECS that leaving them out would leave a hole in the testing network. So it, we were able to get it. Ironically, St. Kitts has received the equipment, um, Antigua has received it, the others are in, um, on shipment to St. Lucia, Grenada, Dominica, etc. The OECS Commission has also been successful in securing funds to procure respirators. We have mobilized something like um, 1.9 million US dollars from the corporate private sector. Um, places like Massey and Republic Bank and Sajiko have been of immense help to us in mobilizing the finances required to help purchase the, the respirators. As you know, that has been a real challenge in terms of the supply chain internationally. We've had um, some countries' orders of respirators seized or we've held, in, held back yes, in the because U.S. because they're looking at themselves Because persons first. are looking to protect themselves first. So, so the demand far exceeds supply, and that has been a huge challenge for us with the, some of the orders that we've made. But things are beginning to ease up now, and we are able to see more, of, more, more um, speed and responsiveness in what we order in. The Director General, who appeared on the Information Command Center on Friday, 5th June 2020, indicated that the OECS Commission will continue to play its part in the fight against COVID-19. 
The business community in the south of the island has consolidated as it prepares to take advantage of the opportunities investments in the south are bringing. The issue was discussed Sunday evening during the GIS NTN panel series COVID-19 Road to Recovery. Anisia Antoine has the details. The Road to Recovery Business and Investment panel discussion focused on investment opportunities around the island and the synergies that exist between government agencies and business organizations as the battle continues against the COVID-19 pandemic. Sabina Valmore, founding president of the Southern Business Association, launched in November 2019, explained that the newly formed body promotes the economic development of the South by providing advocacy and support for small businesses, including car rentals, bookstores, taxi drivers, and contractors. Valmo stated that with new projects continuously coming on stream for the advancement and future development of the south of the island, this type of institution is critical in creating opportunities for small businesses. We're now at the point where we want those projects to happen. We are waiting for them to happen. We want to see improved <coughs> an improved economic climate in the south of the island. That is what we are looking for. We invest the same kind of money as the rest of St. Lucia, we want to begin seeing the same kind of returns. And we do not think that isolating ourselves as a community is going to work in our to our advantage. We, we understand that the world um, is now a global space and isolation does nothing for us as a community. All it will do is to keep us um, as, at a disadvantage. Valmo explained that the Southern Business Association will continue to liaise with entities such as Invest St. Lucia to ensure inclusion in plans for the development of the South. At some point before um, things begin to actually take root, that we would have another opportunity um, to sit with Invest St. Lucia as an association so our members would have that opportunity to dialogue with Invest St. Lucia to find out exactly how it is they would be able to capitalize on what it is that was coming for the South. And that is one of the fundamental reasons, um, Lisa, why we're insisting on ensuring that the Southern Business Association is present at the table. Because for too long, businesses in the South have not had a voice have not had their presence um, at the table where the decisions are being made. With the change in dynamics of operations due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the president of the Southern Business Association encouraged members to find new ways to make their business more efficient and profitable. What we are finding is that there is a lot of um, need as far as financing will go because for a lot of members, business has ground to a halt. There is no money coming into the business. And so for some of them, the concern is whether I will even be around post-COVID. Um, so that is, that is one of the challenges. Another big um, need right now in the MSME space is the ability to pivot your business so that you have an online presence. And um, I was fortunate to take part um, in a recent meeting with the OAS where um, they were discussing this platform that is now available to MSMEs where your business can um, move online if you don't have the capacity. Because what we saw during COVID was that businesses who had the capability of operating in the online space were able to continue, especially if they were essential. Um, but for those of them who did not have that capability, everything ground to a halt. The Southern Business Association has a membership of 58 businesses to date. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Still with business, the manufacturing sector was met with a snag with the onset of COVID-19. However, manufacturers are looking toward continuing the growth trajectory that the sector began last year. In 2019, manufacturing recorded growth estimated at 8.6%, 
up from 6.6% in 2018. The sector's contribution to overall real GDP moved from 3.2% in 2018 to 3.4% in 2019. President of the St. Lucia Manufacturing Association, Margaret E. Z., attributes the positive movement to innovation in the sector and an enabling environment created by government. She was a panelist on the GIS NTN series COVID-19, Road to Recovery. The discussion focused on investment and business opportunities. One thing that the government did um, for us, which was very favorable, is um, the VAT. Um, paying the VAT at the point of sale rather than at the port. Because um, before 2018, like two years ago, prior to that, we, when, when VAT was implemented, we were paying VAT at the port. So what used to happen to us, we, because of economies of scale, we were not, we didn't, some of us didn't have the capacity to do bulk purchase of raw material because the VAT would increase, obviously, based on the amount. But now that that was removed, um, um, the Prime Minister, at the first meeting with us, you know, that was one of the great things he did for us. We're very grateful for. Um, he removed the VAT at the point of the port and put it at the point of sale. And you know, cash flow is king. Mm -hmm. That's your reality. So that has now enabled us with the increased demand to be able to buy more bulk. So increase your working capital, buy more bulk, and you pay the VAT at the point of sale. So when we buy more bulk, that means we get bulk discount, economies of scale, and it's beneficial to us, and it has a domino effect on the consumers. So we're very grateful for that. In 2019, the estimated value of manufacturing production expanded by 6.1% to $340.1 million. The food subsector, which is the second largest component of manufacturing output, contributed most significantly to the growth in total manufacturing production, expanding by 14.4% in 2019 to $103.5 million. Margaret Daisy says the sector's performance during a year when Brexit and the U.S.-China trade war threatened to derail global business, the local manufacturing sector was able to not only maintain stride, but improve its gains. The government has already made a commitment for the, 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 the plans to support local businesses that they will give us what is required, whether it be um, warehouse spacing, whether it be concession, the similar opportunities that are there for foreign investors to come in it is also there for locals to, to get and that is very important and we need to remember that but we need to have that entrepreneurial spirit we need to be able to decide that we're going to sell our way through the crisis and not just sit back and wait until the government do everything for us we need to do something for ourselves to be able to sell ourselves through the crisis and then win towards the end president of the saint lucia manufacturers association margaret daisy appearing there on the gis ntn panel series covid19 road to recovery in response to the economic impact of COVID-19, Winwood and Leeward Brewery Limited, Dubalay's bottling company, WLBL DBC, has announced its 2020 Peter Malta Nourishing Futures campaign plans. The aim of the campaign is to give back to vulnerable families across the island through the St. Lucia Development Fund, SSDF, Massey Stores Supermarkets, and the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO. We have more in this report. WLBL DBC kicked off the 2020 leg of its Peter Malta Nourishing Futures campaign recently in the community of Groselay. Company officials were pleased to relaunch the campaign, partnering with the Senusha Social Development Fund, the SSDF, to provide food and grocery supplies to vulnerable families negatively affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. SSDF will be assisting us in selecting vulnerable families in various communities island-wide. And the Peter Malta brand will be providing these families with much needed food and grocery items. This will be done on a monthly basis. Every month we'll be selecting one community and then we're targeting six families per community. We're starting off this month with the Grozy Lake community and we'll be working our way down to the south of the island. 
Executive Director of the SSDF, Alison Mathere, expressed gratitude for the contribution, particularly during this challenging time. It is unfortunate that COVID has come along and decimated the economies, not just of St. Lucia and, the, and the other islands in the region, but also internationally. And the troublesome thing about that is, and which, which is what makes this, this contribution so invaluable, is because we know that um, private sector organizations uh, will be a little crash trapped around this time, at a time when we will, we will need to call on them the most. The second phase of the campaign, according to WLBL DBC officials, is currently active through a promotion at Massey Stores supermarkets. For every Peter Malta purchased, five cents will be donated to Nemo to assist families in need. The 2020 Peter Malta Nourishing Futures campaign is committed to providing support to local families through other trusted partnerships in 2020 and beyond. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. In keeping with changes in international oil prices and government's application of the modified market pass through petroleum pricing mechanism, the retail price of diesel LPG 20, 22 and 100 pound cylinders has changed. The retail price of gasoline and kerosene remained unchanged. The price changes take effect from Monday, June 8, 2020. Gasoline remains unchanged at $11.50 per gallon. Kerosene remains unchanged at $7.15 per gallon. Diesel decreased from $11.92 to $10.44 per gallon. The 20-pound LPG cylinder has decreased from $26.19 to $25.82. The 22-pound cylinder also decreased from $28.80 to $28.40. The 100-pound cylinder decreased from $147.71 to $144.05. The next adjustment of the retail price of fuel products will be on Monday, June 29, 2020. And this is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. It is possible for infected food handlers or workers to introduce the COVID-19 virus into food or onto surfaces within the food business by coughing and sneezing or through hand contact unless they strictly follow good personal hygiene practices. Food handlers must wash their hands before starting work, before handling cooked or ready-to-eat food, after handling or preparing raw food, after handling waste, after cleaning duties after using the toilet, after blowing their nose or sneezing or coughing, after eating or drinking, and after handling money. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow St. Lucians access to clean, healthy, and safe food. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle a Creole. Monsieur Trajanel, Monsieur Madame, Department qui nous est responsable pour information en gouvernement cette ci GIS et puis Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, Capuzato Nouvelle a Creole. Capuzato Primus Hutchinson. Le chauffeur l'auto passager. J'ai trouvé permission pour voyager et puis plus passager à présent. Nous avons une discussion à ce NTN. Premier vice-président du Conseil national pour la transportation publique, Kentry Frederick, a annoncé qu'il a commencé depuis lundi le 8 juin l'autopassager qui a apporté 10 passagers à bord de l'auto. Selon Frederick, à présent, c'est pour cela que j'ai fait tout ça qui était mérité pour assister et le Conseil là aussi. Alors, le Conseil là n'est pas qui 
ni chauffeur l'auto passager et les passagers qui ont coopéré et suivent tout le qui est en place pendant qu'ils abordent sur l'auto salaire. Sous le cas, il y a sept passagers. Avec on est cinq. On joue une jeune famille qui est dans la même cas. Et on est trois et quatre. Ça, normalement, il y a maintenant en haut sept. Parce que c'est mon qui vivent ensemble, ils vont rester ensemble. Donc, ça, on est pour faire, là où c'est un chauffeur, et on est un monde où il y a deux ou trois personnes qui restent ensemble. On est droit pour ranger les machines pour accommoder ça. Trusty concept là, Spencer McPhee, remarque qui, il a déjà trouvé tout ce qui est nécessaire pour le ministère de la Santé, et qui a même déjà fait tout ce qui est possible pour assister les chauffeurs de l'autopassager. Mais si ces chauffeurs de l'autopassager ont continué pour refuser, pour coopérer, les mêmes publics qui ont pour écrire et faire une plainte qui ont une assistance, côté qu'on s'est là même, qui a corrigé la situation. Nous même nous avons une responsabilité pour nous, pour garder pour nous affaires. Oui. Et nous même nous avons une responsabilité pour nous faire ce qui doit être. Nous avons conscience. Si nous avons des chauffeurs pour mettre Caillou en ordre. Comment se mettre à commencer pour compter des plus bonnes Et nous pour commencer pour Le ministère de la Santé et le ministère de l'Éducation qui travaille sans poser pour faire assurer que les instituteurs, ça c'est l'étude à l'école et les étudiants, recevront toute protection pour la santé comme l'école déjà vivé en opération pour ceux qui ont grade 6 à l'école première et 6 e forme à l'école secondaire. Un effort pour continuer à protéger et à abattre la maladie de Corona pour s'y manger. C'est l'école là où les pays a facilité la distance sociale et aussi la protection pour contrôler la maladie. Le chef officier du département de la santé, Paco Ragnan, a toute confiance que c'est l'école là qui respecte tout le protocole et pour que c'est les soins conduits à des environnements qui s'en dessinent. Selon Ragnan, PPA, j'ai eu des goûts de gé qui maladie ça la capoté et si des marches pas faites pour abattre les qualités problèmes dans qui a une cause. Alors, ce réseau est très important pour le ministère et c'est l'école là principalement implémenter tout le protocole. Maîtresse et l'école première, ça c'est maîtresse et l'école première d'Impolet, Eflin Leos, déclare que l'école là j'ai implémenté toutes ces règles là qui sont nécessaires pour tenir six pieds de distance aussi pour les parents pas entrer en école là sans masse à souffrir de yo. Il dit qu'il y a eu aussi quatre janitors pour voir que tout étudiant sanitise à parmi l'autre règle pour protéger tout à ces écoles là. À sous façade du ministère de la Santé, la Kaïni Nos qui a visité ces écoles là règlement pour faciliter la communication et pour tenir un ces de check maîtresse et mettre l'école ça qui peut affecter les étudiants. Ça, c'est pour faire assurer que si les pièces étudiants trouvent les malades, ils peuvent trouver un traitement de facilité santé qui peut être pour vivre à la vie. Là, j'ai eu un changement en prix pétrole, quand ils ont un cylindre 20, 22 et 100 livres. Le prix de gasoline et la carousine restent à la même prix qu'on avait. Le prix de gasoline, c'est le même prix qu'on avait. Ça, c'est 10 dollars et 10 dollars par litre, et bien 11 dollars et des 4 sous par gallon. Causez pas changer non plus. Et quoi c'est 1 dollar et des 4 goudé sous par litre, et bien 7 dollars et 7 goudé sous par gallon. Diesel ou édouille sorti à 10 dollars et des 7 go par litre, et bien 11 dollars et 3 chlin 10 go pour 10 dollars et 1 chlin 10 go par gallon. Si l'on a 20 livres là ou édouille par 26 dollars et 9 goudé sous par pour 25 dollars, et 3 chlin 5 go par cylindre. Cylindre 20 délivre la réduit par 28 dollars et 3 chlin 4 go ou 28 dollars et 1 chlin 8 go par cylindre. Cylindre 1 chlin 8 la réduit par 147 dollars et 2 chlin 11 go dessous pour 144 dollars et 4 nœuds par cylindre. Et c'est comme ça, nous entrons pour une nouvelle là, monsieur, madame, je vous remercie autant pour que vous regardez. Je vais vous inviter à 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 vous in
Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.